hospitality is hard work and it can be kind of scary and awkward and uncomfortable when we aren't used to it. But the only way to get over it is to get used to it through practice. So I'm going to give you three tips for getting better at hospitality and stay tuned for the bonus at the end. I'm Misty Winkler of Simply Convivial here talking about homemaking, homeschooling, and doing life cheerfully. If that's the kind of encouragement that you need, then be sure to subscribe and click the like button because not only will you get notifications for it, but YouTube will recognize that this is content worth sharing for you and for others like us who want to build better homes. We talk a lot about community. We want to have community and be a part of a community, but how does community happen? How is it created and built and fed and maintained? It's through hospitality. Yes, we need to be plugged in as members at our church, attending weekly, but then for those relationships to be built, for our lives to be knit together, we need to be extending hospitality to one another. And of course, hospitality begins with the people who live in our own homes. They need hospitality. Our church family needs hospitality. So let's talk about three habits that we can build as mothers, as homemakers, to be more hospitable. Let's dig in. So we know that our home is for hospitality, but it seems so hard. It's extra and we have no room for extra. We want to be hospitable, but it just doesn't come naturally. The one thing that makes hospitality so difficult is that we are out of practice. It's easy to slip into selfish patterns, doing what needs to be done on our own agendas, taking a break, keeping to ourselves and to our own thoughts. Instead, we need to practice the habit of hospitality. Being hospitable includes, but it's also much broader than having people over for dinner. Being hospitable means inviting people into our lives, even the people that live in our homes. <laughs> It's not enough to simply share a roof with people. We need to share a life, a full life, a conversational life with them all. And that sort of life will then overflow into the lives of others through invitations and conversations, but really mostly through our demeanor. The way that we treat people is either selfish or welcoming inviting or exclusive, interested or bored. When we practice a hospitable mindset and manner with our family, it will become how we treat others as well. The habit of hospitality will shape all our interactions. The ways that we are hospitable to others are the same ways that we are hospitable to our own families. And if we're not hospitable first to our family, then we really cannot truly be hospitable to anyone else. Too often our society's default is to assume that being authentic and sharing life means really being discourteous and rude. Being real sometimes means letting our worst side show and expecting others to love us anyway rather than choosing ourselves to love them more than we love ourselves by fighting our selfish desires and putting other people's comfort and interests above our own. Manners are love displayed in little things. We teach our children manners first by having manners ourselves. We teach our children manners by instructing them, 
but also by treating them courteously. Manners are love in action, and they're not a show put on to impress people. The habit of hospitality is a disposition, a set of manners that goes beyond chewing with our mouth closed and using a napkin instead of our sleeves. But those are good places to begin. <laughs> so here are three habits that we can practice to become increasingly hospitable in our attitudes as well as our actions. First, be hospitable by offering refreshment. Early on, my husband and I learned a hospitality tip that has served us well. Immediately after welcoming someone in, offer a beverage. A drink is hospitable. It's showing concern for another's welfare. It puts their comfort first and it puts them at ease. Make it your go-to hospitality strategy to bridge that awkward first introduction moment. If you want to break the ice, start conversation, or make someone feel cared for, offer them a drink, even if it's just a glass of cold water. Two, be hospitable by asking questions. The best way to get a conversation flowing is to ask questions rather than pontificate. Ask genuine questions about their interests, their experiences, their history, and then follow up with questions as you listen. This is easier and more natural when we have guests over, especially new people that we're meeting. But we can even use this strategy with our own children. Do we actually listen to their thoughts and stories? Can we show them the same courtesy that we would a guest? Let's show the most courtesy and express the most loving kindness to those that we do love most, and not only to those that we know the least. If we want someone to feel loved, then we start by asking them questions and listening receptively to them. Third, we can be more hospitable by being prepared. So a friend walks in and we say, make yourself at home. What does that mean? Does it mean belch at the table or toss your trash on the floor? Some, some children might think so, but no. Letting our children do so is not letting them be themselves or letting them feel at home. It's letting them be little beasts rather than little humans. Feeling at home does mean respecting our guests, our children, one another as people, and not treating them as pets or projects. It means keeping our homes as places where people can make themselves at home. Is there food in the cupboards, supplies for creativity, space for conversations? Is there enough room for people around the table? Is there room for people on the couch? Is it unsanitary or unsafe to be comfortable and freely use the house as a place for living? Lived in homes are not pristine showcases, nor should they be. A guest or a child should not be afraid to disturb the perfection of the setting. Homes should be ready tools to be used. And let that standard, rather than some magazine spread or Instagram photo, be our guide. Can people, family or not, feel at home here? All right, my bonus habit of hospitality is smile. This single habit will increase your hospitality quotient and should be applied while performing all the other habits. Our own demeanors will be the most significant factor in our hospitality. What is our expression when we look at those in our homes, whether they live there or whether they're guests? Let it be one of benevolent interest warm affection, and even delight. 
Let us be glad that they are in our home and let them see that we are glad. I know that one of the things that really holds us up in offering hospitality to others outside of our home is the state of our home. Living life with children is messy. It's cluttered. And going all extreme minimalism is not usually actually an option. Instead, we just need to regularly pick things up. We need to not assume that our job is to make things always static, clean, perfect, pristine all the time that every mess is a problem, but rather we need to build regular times into our day where we tidy things up. In our family, we call those times EHAP, which stands for everything has a place. EHAP. That means put the things in their place, not on the table, not on the floor, not on the couch, put things back in their place. This little maneuver exercised once or twice a day for five to 10 minutes keeps things manageable and presentable for spur of the moment or even planned guests. If you would like to set up an EHAP habit in your family, I have a free guide that will show you how to get it going in your own family, get the kids on board and make it a routine. Just go to simplyconvivial.com slash EHAP or find the link in the description below to get that free guide. While you're offering hospitality, while you're e-happing, remember always to repent, rejoice, repeat.